I believe that every human being who has ever lived or will ever live is asking, has asked, and or will ask four basic questions. These four questions are these. Who am I? Why am I here? What is wrong with the world? And how can what is wrong be made right? We may not all articulate those questions, but it is in the soul of every man to wrestle with those questions. Who am I? What is my nature? What is my essence? Why am I here? What is my goal? What is my purpose? What is wrong with the world? Because it's obvious that something is wrong. And how can what is wrong be made right? Colossians chapter 1. And let's see how the Bible responds to these same questions. Let's see how the Christian worldview responds to these same issues. Let's see how the supremacy of Christ can be applied to life's ultimate questions. To the questions of who am I and why am I here and what is wrong with the world and how can what is wrong be made right. Question number one, who am I? Look beginning verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created both in the heavens and on the earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him here's the irony the question is who am i it almost seems like the text didn't answer the question if you're starting with me if you're starting with man and my question is who am i why does the text start with he is because of the supremacy of christ and truth you see, the text begins with Christ as the creator of all things. So the answer to the question, who am I, begins with who Jesus is. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the icon, if you will. He is the exact representation. He is the picture in human flesh of who God is. He is God on this earth. He is God with us, God among us. He is the Almighty. So who am I? Secular humanism says that I am the result of random processes. Christian theism says I am the crowning glory of the creation of God. Christian theism says he knit me together in my mother's womb. Christian theism says I am no accident. I am no result of random processes. Christian theism says whether I am tall and beautiful or whether I am small and not so handsome, whether my body functions perfectly or I am deformed severely, I am the crowning glory of the creation of God. And as a result, I have inherent dignity and inherent worth and inherent value. Question number two, why am I here? This, this postmodern secular humanism basically says that we are here to make the most of it. There is no rhyme or reason, so we're here to make the most of it. Consume, enjoy. That's why you're here. This is the overarching mentality in our culture, both inside and outside of the church that causes people in our culture where the rest of the world looks at children as a blessing we look at them as a blight and as a burden where the poorest nations in the world talk about how many children they can have we talk about how many children we can afford we have houses that are larger than they've ever been and families that are smaller than they've ever been why when our attitude toward children is a boy for me and a girl for you and praise the Lord we're finally through why because they get in the way of our consumption and our enjoyment they cost too much that's secular humanism Christian theism looks at the question of why are we here and answers it very differently all things were created through him and all things were created for him the ultimate purpose of all things is to bring him glory and honor 
and that he might have the supremacy in all things. So who am I? The crowning glory of the creation of God. Why am I here? To bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I exist. That is why you exist. That is why he breathed into us the very breath of life. He is before all things. Why did you choose your last job? Was it because of the supremacy of Christ and truth as it relates to your purpose for existing? Or was it because it paid you more than the place you were before? What is wrong with the world? There's obviously something wrong with the world. What is wrong with the world? You. I mean, me too, but mainly you. <laughs> Hostile in mind and engaged in evil deeds. What is wrong with the world? You are the crowning glory of the creation of God. You are created to live and bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and instead you are hostile toward the one by whom and for whom you were created that is what's wrong with the world the problem is me the problem is the fact that I do not acknowledge the supremacy of Christ in truth the problem is I start with me as the measure of all things the problem is, I judge God based upon how well he carries out my agenda for the world. And I believe in the supremacy of me in truth. And as a result, I want a God who is omnipotent but not sovereign. If I have a God who is omnipotent but not sovereign, I can wield his power. But if my God is both omnipotent and sovereign, I am at his mercy. Who am I? The crowning glory of the creation of God. Why am I here? To bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. What is wrong with the world? Me. I don't do what I was meant to do. How can what is wrong be made right? that there could have been some question about his justice as it would have appeared that someone somewhere could have said God how can you claim to be righteous and you did not crush Moses the murderer you did not crush Abraham the liar you did not crush David the adulterer how oh God when God crushed and killed his son and satisfied his wrath in order that he might be both just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. Was that enough for Adam's sin? Was that enough for Moses' sin? Was that enough for Abraham's sin? Can you hear the rhetorical questions from Calvary? Was that enough for your sin? Was that enough for you to recognize the supremacy of Christ? There was nothing else that could have been done. That would have allowed God to be both just and our justifier. But in Christ, in his humiliation and his exaltation, the question is answered. How can what is wrong be made right? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. How can what is wrong be made right? The spotless sinless Lamb of God is crushed rejected and killed to pay a debt that he did not owe 
on behalf of sinners who could never pay him back.